Holy goddamn moly! The sheer amount of ideas and things you gave me to do in Noita is so massive and I'm so thankful for it that I felt obligated to try to do as much as I can. Initially I thought, well, I can record like 15 hours, then I surely have enough content and achieved some things. What really happened is, Jesus Christ, I have been playing for 35 hours in only a few days, including streaming, and I cannot stop going around and trying to make broken shtakes and commit mass murder. I got sucked into the game even more than before by the things you helped me learn. <laughs> I love this. And fine. Hell yeah. I'm digging this. And I'm gonna show you all of it. So strap yourselves in, kiss your homies goodnight, and prepare your butt cheeks, because this is gonna be a fun one. Oh yeah. I have learned so many things that I'm gonna put them in a list and say them fast. Yeah. So let's go. I don't see shit. I no! Uh, no? Just... Uh, no. Shut your whore mouth. No fast lists, okay? Okay, okay. No. <sighs> okay, okay. I'm scared. Ooh, I have... I have peed a little. Oh, okay. On the 26th of December 2022, I had my first stream of Noita ever. And this is where my slight addiction started. The stream went well. I expected that not a single soul will show up. But to my surprise, there were multiple people helping me through with this learning. And for that, I'm thankful. And this is why I make this kind of a checklist or whatever I can call this of every new thing I've learned. And a summary of the stream to show my appreciation to these people and to show you how a little help from others can start big things. So, let's go. The first thing I learned was how to kill Mr. Ball Boy over here even before the stream. I saw a video of it, it didn't seem too hard, and it really wasn't. I got it like the second or third time and it's a great start for a run, having some nice sticks and spells, so killing ball boy. Check. From now on I just had to hold myself back from starting every round killing ball boy, because who in the world wants to see a person sitting and waiting for 5 minutes every start of a run? Why am I starting the stream with this? Let's see the good side of it. At least I got some real good shticks early on in this round. Not bad. And a kind of slowly teleporting shtick with the help of chat. Or... Oh, it does, but very slowly. Oh yeah, okay, that's very uh, delayed. Okay, good. So, learning improvised teleport, check. For the first time, I tried to go back up some levels instead of going... <laughs> Because I also heard that every place is basically interconnected. So, check. This worked flawlessly. And if I wouldn't be an idiot, I wouldn't have even died. Many people told me that uh, you can go up to the tree. Oh fuck! To not bore anyone who might join the stream with waiting until Ball Boy kills itself, I instead try to get on the tree. I was thinking of all the possibilities on how to get up. So I need levitation, or I need some teleporting bolt, just to get a great idea from chat. That reloading the game with the mod restart also reloads levitation, with which you can fly for however often you reload the game. What? Restarting the game resets your levitation? Fuck yeah! I of course instantly tried that. Make it empty. Ball and then <laughs> I'm so I am so gonna cheese this shit and then use this to cheese myself up on the tree. Learning a weird levitation glitch? Check. After jamming to some mighty fine melodies. Hell yeah. I'm digging this. Okay, I'm actually vibing here for a second. I threw the so-called swinging eggs on the tree, so the swingers inside maybe eat themselves into the middle so I can get in. That of course went well. Let's start this slowly. I don't see shit. Ah! <laughs> this is what a real specimen looks and sounds like, ladies and gentlemen. Being the bravest man alive. Check. After this death, the learning got hacking intense. With not one, but multiple amazing viewers who knew way more about the game than I did, I went to kill Boy Boy again. These ones are extremely good, said one chatter. Go to the holy mountain immediately, said another. And like a good boy, I trusted them, although sometimes they said the W word instead of shtick. We made a homing egg that has electric boys in it, and later changed it to a multicasting beast. Ah! 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 In fact, this Neutron was a turning point in my shtick making. Until now, my idea of making a shtick was <laughs> shooty spell, <laughs> shtick low recharge. <laughs> but that changed to. Okay, I have a trigger spell. I can put multicast on it. So it triggers this and this spell. And then this modifier before this multicast makes both spells cast the modifier. But now it might be dangerous to shoot close, so explosion immunity would be great. 
I could also try it with these pairs. Ah, no, 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 the other ones are better. You see what I mean? From straightforward thinking, it turned into something where the ideas bounce off of each other and I find this amazing. Ever since this moment, shtick making excites me way more because until now I found trigger spells weird and I couldn't use them, but now I see them as opportunities to make a plethora of cool stuff. So learning multicast and triggers and being more excited about the game, check. The viewers also teach me something cool. Making peace with the gods with this perk makes you immune to anger the gods, which is crucial to breaking out of the holy mountain without Steve being angry. But as I could use one of the spells Ball Boy gave me to make a big hole in the mountain. I let's go. Yep, I can go. Cool. So staying in peace with the gods and breaking out of the mountain so I can edit sticks anytime. Check. The run was 1 hour and 27 minutes long and from that run 90% was me standing around in the holy mountain trying to make a cool shtick with instructions from chat. So I genuinely don't have much more interesting to show other than EGG MACHINE GUN! Yeah! yeah. Fuck the EGG MACHINE GUN! Yeah! EGG MACHINE GUN! EGG MACHINE GUN! <laughs> Sadly even EGG MACHINE GUN didn't say- okay, it's so funny. Uh. Sadly, even egg machine gun didn't save me from the anticlimactic death of me walking into my own fire. Yay! Next run. Oh, uh, next run was a failure. No, I messed it up. Damn me. Instead, I downloaded some mods, more specifically, Twitch Extended, a Morgus Sus player model. <laughs> <laughs> you got noited death screen. Thick Mina, what is happening? So one thing you can be sure about is that I didn't get this mod. No, um, I will never. There is no way of we are getting that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> hey, Mogus mod, easy with hair mod, and then the game over Moai, which I ended up not liking that much. After some tinkering with the mod settings and setting up the Twitch mod, I was ready, or so I thought, because everything after this happened to be utterly chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Thirty seconds. That's not good. Ah! <clears throat> Wait. Can you die, Santa, please? <laughs> Eat your vegetables. What the fuck is Rob? The chest appears. I ripped tea on myself. How does eat tea look? What did I expect? What is it? Fuck. My legs. My legs fell off. Oh. Everything explodes. That's fun. Ooh, okay, back to learning mode with Thick Mina. Okay, maybe no Thick Mina, because I'm scared to show these explicit pixels for a long time. But learning about the birds and the bees, check. Or in terms of Noita, learning about the Hamogus and the Picutuli Karpanen, check. So back to colorful Mina and killing Ball Boy and then not dying in the lava on the way back. Like, an idiot, who would do that? The thing I learned in the next run though, I found very interesting. In the Heasy base, my viewers told me not to kill this green gun guy with the great haircut. I wonder where he got the haircut from. <laughs> the reasoning was that it's a healer and if two of these guys are in the same room and you hurt them, but don't kill them, they try to heal each other and you can use this to heal yourself. I was walking around with our long haired friend for a long time, but sadly I couldn't get him to heal me in any way, but learning that there's a possibility to heal yourself with this, check. Also relearning that you don't shoot randomly picked up sticks. Yeah, check. Don't shoot random bonds. Don't no random stick shooting. No random stick shooting. By the way, no you didn't just hear me say the W word. I definitely said stick there. Wait, let me show you. Don't shoot random sticks. Don't no random stick shooting. No random stick shooting. You heard it yourself, so don't come to me in the comments, okay? The next one was the moment I took it upon myself to learn new ways to get out of the holy mountain without summoning Steve. So I searched some videos and found this amazing video by Dunker Slam that I'm gonna put in the description. Although he explains it better and you should check out his video, I give you a small rundown on what knowledge I try to use from him. So this is where you get out of the holy mountain. The mountain only collapses if you go into this part of it and it also collapses if you destroy the wall at any of these lines. So I thought if I manage to teleport myself from here to here, it shouldn't collapse. So let's see how I did that. You know what? We just try it. I mean, let's just free ball it. As you can see, not wet, but my theory works because I managed to do it later. So learning how to get out of the holy mountain in other ways, check. It was getting kinda late and I was getting kinda tired. From the tiredness, I got a little careless and teleported around. And then apparently, ice cream is mealy. Ice cream is mealy. <laughs> 
I wanted something new to do, so some people suggested to go to the left of the big tree. What I found was an eye that shoots a cool laser that damages enemies and you can destroy some soft ground with it. With its laser I could also make some invisible platforms above this jam box visible. <gasps> which I found extremely cool. I didn't go up on them, but knowing they are there, check. Going more to the left, I found this house with a weird book inside that belongs to someone who clearly likes to write in secrets or is just plain stupid. I'm safe here, I am safe. I left the others behind and locked my research so that only those with real understanding can access the research. Eh, should take care. <laughs> as long as I resist the temptation, I am safe. T, know the boundaries, here I am far from them. I don't have to worry. Under this house was a little secret box. Viewers told me, getting there is easy, I just have to bring an emerald tablet with me and throw it in the house and then a portal opens that goes into the box. Learning the secret? Check. Sadly I didn't have a tablet with me in this run, but I wanted to look around the box so I tried to make the water evaporate with the laser eye and then go around the box to see what's there. In my tiredness I managed to misclick and throw the eye and got killed by it. No I tr- <sighs> I accidentally clicked and threw it. <laughs> That's okay though, because this gave me the opportunity to get an emerald tablet and then go back. So, let's get the tablet. Hey, dum dum, don't go down there, there's an emerald tablet even closer. Said some viewer without the dum dum part and then told me to climb up the highest point of the mountain. Ah, yes, that's music to my ears. Uh, literally, because I realized that this is the orb sound. Well, 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 learning this orb position? Check. I got the orb and the tablet, but someone said, No, 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 don't go yet. You have to go up there where the orb was. Like a good boy, I followed their advice, and although someone doubted me being able to fly high enough, I managed to do it and stand on a pixel, and then acted like a grown-up about it, not putting it under their nose, that they doubted I me. I can. What, what did you just say? Hmm? What did you just tell me? Huh? Huh? What did you say? Hmm? I did it. You see? I did it. They also told me when I'm up there I should throw the tablet on the altar. For some reason the tablet decided to turn into gold and leave me tabletless so I did have to go down and get the other tablet. I went back to the house with it and threw it in there. The portal opened and I was getting ready to go in because apparently there is an enemy in there. Whew, okay, let's go. Magic should work well. Okay. Oh, it was timed? No, it wasn't timed. It was just the burning from me lasering this lamp, cancelling it out. Rude. As I couldn't go in again, in my rage, I murdered this wooden dude with the laser. Me being a master detective, I found this essence, which I thought was just a spell. Aha, I knew there's something here. So I picked it up. I instantly realized it clearly wasn't just a spell, because I started exploding all over the place, killing the whole animal population of wherever we are. Oh! Sorry fish. Oops. But knowing about this essence, check. This explosion looked very destructive, so I thought maybe I can try to blow myself into the box. After standing around on the box for a bit, my hypothesis seemed to be correct. The metal was very slowly getting destroyed, so I waited and waited and waited. To be exact, I waited 8 minutes, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I was getting very tired, so it felt like a decade. Finally it was done. I could get in. I can go in. Get some modifiers that apparently make my spells colorful, and I killed the enemy in there, so some new spells. Check. This was more or less the end of the stream, and to anyone who came by, I say my biggest thank you again. You might be thinking to yourself, but Balint, the stream was 6 hours long and you said you played 35 hours total and we're already at 13 minutes and 40 seconds in the video. Why are those 29 hours so disproportionately short relative to the stream? Well, that is a great question, viewer slash friend slash sexy person. And the answer is easy. In the stream I had chat that helped me and bombarded me with new things they already knew and could help me with. In the other 29 hours I was alone, trying to use the information chat gave me in the stream and I was mostly adventuring away from what I already know when given the opportunity. Opportunity in this context meaning a strong shtick, good perks, good combinations of items, etc. Also most of the time I was standing around trying to make a broken shtick and I took my time to do that because the stream not being on I didn't feel like I'm boring a 
group of viewers by standing around for way too long and could have my fun trying every combination of spells for hours. From here on out, you can also be sure that every round I started, I went up to get the orb above the mountain and went to kill Ball Boy. I enjoy this little boost of power these things give me and I don't mind the waiting. So let's start the non-stream part with a round I have closed in my heart forever for multiple reasons. I found the vampirism perk, with which I had a lot of fun sawing bodies apart getting their blood to drink and making a huge pool of blood to bathe in. And I made one of the most broken sticks I have put my hands on yet, by more or less an accident. Also I found this cool little place I didn't know existed. What is this? And use my detective skills, that if blood is in the sand clock, all I need is more blood, which I have enough of. <laughs> Oh hey, gold. Cool. Learning the scent clock? Check. But back to the shtick. I already knew that saws are a great base for broken ones. One of you in the comments even took the time to deeply explain it to me, which is just amazing to me. But I just haven't realized how broken it can actually be. Hours of trying out every possible combination of spells paid off in this moment. Jesus. My first thought was, alchemist? I am coming for you. I was so excited by this one, I even wanted to show my girlfriend how amazing it is. Which... <laughs> uh, yeah, this is what I get for trying to show off. It was close, but vampirism is amazing, so there were no problems. I tried to approach the alchemist from above. This is how I found the ancient laboratory, which I knew was to the right of the alchemist, so let's go, you bitch. Here I come. I was waiting for this for so long. I will murder you and your family. Oh, uh, he reflects that back. My strength seemed to be my weakness. I didn't know that he has this shield, so yeah. I got mad and turned off the recording and went to do something else for a few hours. When I came back, I didn't restart the recording, but managed to get into the tree. I used unstable teleportation, which teleported me into the room inside, so getting in the tree, check. But while trying to reenact this for the recording, it just teleported me into this room with a lot of water. Me being an idiot, I mean a very clever person, forgot that I had teleportation and could get out with that. Instead I tried to swim out and died. I can't prove how I got in the tree, but I can prove that I can do this teleport so the holy mountain doesn't collapse. So, ha! At least something. My detective skills were also on point. By this puzzle here. Call me a master detective and a master kicker, because I did it on the first try. More or less. Learning this puzzle. Check. I had one more amazing rom with an amazing shtick, because my skills to see and use combinations of spells and tricks has made me a pretty consistent shticksmith. I thought, it's time. Alchemist, I am coming again. I went back up again. And by going up, I heard this peculiar little sound. My detective senses were tingling again. Told me that there's an orb in this wall and voila, I was right. Learning about this orb? Check. Now it was time. I went outside again and tried to come in from above, literally nailing the exact location of the boss room. The fight was on. Everything I did led up to this moment and I died. Okay guys, give me tips to kill this guy. i lazy to google, just killing the alchemist. Not check. The last secret I found was this stone that looked weirdly like an egg. The detective skills kicked in and I knew I have to mine myself in the middle, which I did. This amazing looking worm came out and killed me, but learning about this worm check. At this point in time, I realized that I recorded way more than I wanted to and it was slowly time to start writing the script and editing. To end this video, I want to talk about something that this game made me realize about life. While playing these runs, I realized I technically didn't win any of them. I was running around for a long time, with every second doubling my chances to die and I didn't manage to kill the alchemist or even have any proper ending. I died in all of them. How can such a game be fun and fulfilling, I asked myself. Why am I not furious like I usually am with other games? Well, with every run and every video I watch and every comment you write, there was something small I learned that helped me to get closer to win. For instance here, I saw from Dunk or Slam that the egg is broken with explosive projectile and for some reason does 325 damage while not having any reason to do so. I watched his video while eating and then I used this knowledge later and had an amazing shtick from it. 
You see what I mean? The game constantly gives you all the possibilities and combinations to be overly strong, but to find these you have to open them with a bit of experience, curiosity or blind trying. So to correct myself from my last video saying, but was it really me who did it and not just the broken shtick? Was it my curiosity that won me the game or was it the RNG god of Neuter for even giving me the chance to make this shtick? No, it was me all along and my curiosity and interest. And now I also see that in the future it is my knowledge that will help me through. This is not so different to life. Knowing things is a virtue and it opens up opportunities. But before that, you have to be curious, learn from others, research and fail. Sometimes you even have to try blindly. I don't even know what I'm doing most of the time while I'm making these videos, but you and the algorithm seem to like it. So blind trying it is until it starts to make sense. What I want to say with this is, if you have any ambitions in life, don't be scared to blindly try. Ask for help and most importantly fail. Slowly progressing or not progressing but at least trying is a million times better than not doing anything because you are scared what if it won't work? What if I won't win? 